So up until this point, you might have thought that this seems to be relatively straightforward, but when going through certain aspects of it, when you really thought about it, it did seem to be a little bit fishy because, for example, if I said that we wanted the expansion of 1 plus x, let's just go to the minus 1, okay? Then what we would have is 1 take away x, then we've got minus 1 times minus 2, so 2 over 2, which is 1, x squared, so plus x squared, minus x cubed, plus x to the 4, minus x to the 5, plus x to the 6, and so on, okay? Now, is it true that the left-hand side is always the same as the right-hand side? Which seems like a good question to ask, okay? Because what we're saying is that we want to say that the left-hand side is precisely the same as the right-hand side. Um, but when we choose some values, something seems to be going wrong. So. If we tried, uh, let's say, x is uh, a half, okay, then the left-hand side is equal to 1 plus 1 half to the minus 1. Now, 1 plus a half is 3 halves. And so 3 halves to the minus 1 is 2 thirds. Okay, so that's the left-hand side. Now, the right-hand side would be 1 take away a half plus a half squared take away a half cubed plus 1 half to the 4 take away a half to the 5, etc. Okay, so if we just do 1, then take away a half, we get one half, okay? Plus a quarter gets us three quarters. So thinking about this as 0 0.6 recurring, okay? With those first three terms, we now have 0 0.75, okay? Take away an eighth gets us to 0 0.625. Then we add on uh, uh, 1 16th which gets us to 11 sixteenths, which is 0.6875. So using those four terms, we currently have 0.6875. Okay? What if we added on another term? Okay, so we, have, we need to subtract uh, 1 over 32 now, and we get 0.65625. Okay, a little bit less. Then I'd have to add on a 64th, which gets us to 0 0.671875. Then I'd have to take away 1 over 128, which is 0 0.6640625. So what you can see is that the gaps between these terms are getting smaller, right? And we are homing in on what appears to be 0.6 recurring. So just from a little bit of uh, trying it out, x equals a half seems to work perfectly fine. So what's the worry? So let's try instead x is 2. Okay. So the left-hand side would be 1 plus 2 to the minus 1. So what's that? 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 to the minus 1 is a third. So 0 0.3 recurring. Now the right-hand side would be 1 take away 2 plus 2 squared take away 2 cubed plus 2 to the 4 take away etc. Okay. So 1 take away 2 is minus 1. Add 4 gets you to 3. Take away 8 is minus 5. Add on 16, you get to 11. So the more terms I'm adding on as I go down this list, I'm actually 
getting further and further and further away from the 0 0.3 recurring, from the one third. And so it's diverging away. So in actual fact, it worked for a half, but it didn't work for two. So there appears to be certain values um, that will work and some that won't. And we refer to this as the range of validity. So what values of x it works for, of it's valid for? What values of x can I substitute into the left-hand side and the right-hand side and I get the same thing? So for this and for this, this 1 plus x to the n, we must say that the modulus of x must be less than 1. Okay, it only works when x is between, because this is synonymous with saying that x is between minus 1 and 1. If it goes outside of that, then it doesn't work anymore. It's not valid for that. Okay, so it requires this concept of the range of validity. And we must be able to identify the range of validity for each binomial expansion that we work with. Um, and we must identify it. Certain in certain exam questions, they will ask for it explicitly. But you really need to understand why it's working and when it's working.